we're leaving Chechnya and approaching the little-known but highly feared Republic of Dagestan, which the British Foreign Office warns people not to visit under any circumstances. So down there is the town of Andy, and it's the first town inside Dagestan, and apparently it's got one of the highest concentrations of Islamic insurgents in the whole of the region. The Russians call them terrorists, but a lot of the local people call them freedom fighters. There's a police checkpoint just ahead, and this is the official border post into Dagestan. Что вам нужно? Документы, паспорт? Документы? Сейчас я дам. Лев, can I have your passport, please? It's like three policemen, and um, they just wanted to know who we were, what we were up to. Um, I can't imagine that many foreigners pass through this way. Um, but actually, after about 10 minutes chat, they um, they just said, right, just go. So um, we've left now. They're all really hyped up because of the situation in the mountains, you know. This volatile state has been called the most dangerous place in Europe. Insurgents continue to fight Russian occupation under the banner of Islam. During the 1990s, when the Chechen war was happening, just over the border to the west, um, a lot of the Chechen rebels tried to escape from the Russian army here to the east, into Dagestan. Today, the rebels hide out in these mountains, and just two months ago, security forces found an arms cache in this town. So it looks like we're getting into the centre of town now. This, this is the centre of Andy. It's difficult to know who's the good guys and the bad guys around here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Is there anywhere to stay around here? Is there any like guest house? Thank you very much. We can just. Uh, shall we just walk towards Gagatli? Yeah. So which way is Gagatli? А как в сторону Гагатли пройти, братья? Вот эта дорога. Вниз. Прямо, прямо. We make it half a mile out of town when we're stopped by two men in a 4x4. They say they're police and that they're taking us back into Andy. After 10 minutes of questions, the police seem to accept that we're harmless. Они думаю, они на подъезда где-то уже, потому что они говорят, ну мы едем, они едут через село. Не, я имею в виду, если вам же ночлег нужен и так и так, правильно? Да, а где искать вообще? Ну что искать? У меня переночуете, поедете тогда, что другого как? Ага, брат. Я из газ из газ. What's that? Не, мы разместимся на полу да. What's that? He says you're staying in my home, at my home tonight, yes. That's very kind. <laughs> Namin has brought me to the remote but renowned village of Kinalik. For a small place, the residents make a big claim. They say it was here that Noah's Ark came to rest. Namin here has got a friend who lives in the village. What's your name? Hajibullah. Hajibullah. Thank you. So the people here think that they're actually yes, yeah, Noah's yeah. descendants. Yes, descendants. <laughs> Despite the remote setting, the people of Kinalik have a proud scholarly tradition. Oh, this is wow. <laughs> he lives in a museum. This is the oldest one, is it? Yes, oldest. Wow. Where are these from? It's found here in Kinalik. What's that? Ah, yeah. Got, he's, got, he's even got a brand new English five-pound note 
With Churchill on the front. <laughs> Sparta. Sparta'nın kılıncı tapılı var orada. Ah, Bar bir okulumla aynı şey çıkmıyor. The sword, sword of Spartans here. Really? Yes. Which one's the Sparta? Bu, 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 bu. The second one. Gördeki bir laf kaydım görsem desteği de olmuyor. So he thinks that's Roman. O bütün Mongol Tatar'dı. Spartan, yes. Very cool. Good museum. <laughs> <laughs> We get introduced to Haji Bala's neighbor. Yusuf, Yusuf. Yusuf, nice to meet you. Then we're sucked into a long running village dispute. So, do people think that the Noah's Ark is, is here and not in Turkey? Yes. yes. <laughs> Biz kit tayfalardan olduk. Yok hep biz Yasef'in evladları yok. Yasef. Han ve Sam. Han, Sam, Kan, üç. Yasef, Kenan, Batı. Dört, hala burada ölü. Bu tufanda, tufan. Deniz değil, o hemen tufanda değiller. Tufanda batır da o bilende. Neyse, neyse, neyse. Well, that cleared that one up. Thank you very much. Thank you. As we leave the next morning, we discover how residents of Kinlik power their village. What's your name? Baghdad. Baghdad. Oh. So basically, Baghdad here is, is making shipwrecks. With few trees at this high altitude, they are forced to burn manure instead of wood. So what do you use these for? So this is just from the cows then, not yes. from the sheep or anything? Any old shit will do. <laughs> Baghdad, can I help? <laughs> Just stand on it and squash it up a bit. Right, this is... <laughs> what the name of exploration? <laughs> Yours seems a lot more solid than mine. Is that OK? <laughs> I reckon you're going to... Squash it up and start again, aren't you, when we leave? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll leave you to it, Baghdad. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. In winter, shepherds from the freezing northern highlands bring their flocks to graze on the Gobistan's mild plains. Now it's spring, they're returning to the high summer pastures. Like Olan here. <laughs> How many sheep do you have to look after? Well, the goin' a bacher the goin, kellen olanda kellen goin uter mo olur. Bacher the ela vaxt olur 500 olur, ela vaxtin min 500 olur. Yani hevan sayına bacher de. Wow. How far do you travel? Burdan usara zam kubiya zam piyada gider. Eşko. 400 kilometers, maybe. 400 kilometers on foot. <laughs> and where do you sleep? Just outside with your sheep? Yo, biz kışlar diye burada ilk şeyler. Right. Thank you very much. Çok sağ ol. Çok sağ ol. While some like Olan pass through here, what do you think this building is up ahead? Others call this home. It looks like farm. Who are these? Who are the people? So the, the shepherd's family. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. This shepherd's camp is home to some 60 people and nearly a thousand sheep and cattle. It's been here for generations. A group of families all just living here in the middle of nowhere. Whilst the men herd, the women keep the place running. Protecting this site from wolves or their Caucasian shepherd dogs. This is how the dogs are welcoming the strangers here. So we are very lucky that the owners are here or they, they can tear us apart. They're bred to kill wolves, but I'm sure would happily have a piece of me. Is it a, is it a hard life living out here in the desert? We haven't got any 
really tense. <laughs> so we're just gonna blow up our air mats and uh, just get our heads down for the night. We'd hope to make it out of the desert tonight, but by 6 p.m., it's gone dark. How close is it, Louis? Uh, seven meters away from us. Is it a dog or a wolf? Dog. Usually, the dogs have this special area which is under protection. Maybe we're in it. It's just been circling our camp. It's not leaving us alone. Fingers crossed it doesn't come any closer. The dog got pretty close last night. It was sniffing around the camp all night and barking, but didn't attack us, which is the main thing. Nagorno-Karabakh was claimed by Armenia before the Russians took over and handed it to Azerbaijan a hundred years ago. Armenia's been trying to get the land back and in 1988 went to war with Azerbaijan to regain control. Our route is taking us through abandoned towns and the last inhabited Armenian village before the front line in one of Europe's longest running conflicts. Total devastation. We've crossed into Nagorno-Karabakh. military vehicle. 20 years ago, this was a thriving spa resort. It's been completely destroyed. Some of the buildings have clearly been hit by artillery shells. Others have just been blown up. Some have burned down. Armenia has one of the highest rates of emigration in the world. But some, like Anoush, have decided to stay. I was uh, six years old, and our childhood was, uh, you know, pretty difficult. You know, we call it the dark years because electricity was uh, limited. So much resource had to be spent on the war, mm. um, that water, uh, fuel, everything in the world, running out of everything, all this bread. Yeah. To get us close to the front line, Anoush has called on the help of an old friend. So you were here during the fighting, during the war? Ah. And were, were you a soldier during the war? Ah. years of fighting, there are still 150,000 Armenians like Edward who refuse to leave here. And can you can you hear the fighting from here? <laughs> What would happen if Azerbaijan invaded? Are you ready to fight? The last fighting in this region happened just five days ago. I always breathe like this. <laughs> Definitely the air. <laughs> <sighs> Over there in the distance, about four miles away, is as my jam begins. And down there in no man's land, there's the occasional burnt out, bombed out house, but apart from that, it's just 
trenches and shell positions.